All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shimei Ashai, by Shimei Rakakadash. Double honors to the elder apostle Jim Messer, real well. Shalom to the Akim that's out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. Shalom to my Akim. Hey, listen, I'm at the uh, Rossville McFarland House in Spring. This is in uh, Chickamauga, uh, Georgia, or what was known as Chickamauga, Georgia, otherwise known as Rossville. And uh, so right here, orient the camera here, it shows that the house was originally built a few hundred yards away by a gentleman named John McDonald. Okay, old McDonald. Old Idumian McDonald. All right, built the house. Now, it says he is the maternal, okay, on the mother's side, maternal grandfather of John Ross. Okay, he and his sister, he and his brothers and sisters came to live with their grandparents in this home when their mother died. Okay, so when, when moms died, they came to live with their maternal grandpa, uh, John O. McDonald, right? And it says, uh, Thomas, Gor Thomas Gordon McFarland, which they named the street after, uh, well, they named the street after, um, after John Ross, and they named the street after uh, McFarland. All right, it says uh, Thomas McFarland bought the house from Reverend Scales, who won it in a land lottery. He and his two brothers lived in the house until uh, Thomas married Elizabeth Anderson. Okay, so after he got married, um, you know, him and his brother or his brother moved out and uh it says thomas had six it says to this union <laughs> okay we're born six children okay josiah all right because you know they take the uh they take all their names from the uh from the scriptures okay in the old times these idumians okay because uh, we know that's what they do, okay? The synagogue of Satan, okay? Which call themselves Jews and are not, all right? So anyway, they had three sons or six six children, but they had Josiah, John, Thomas, all right? Those are three boys and they had three daughters. But guess what it says? It says Josiah was the first mayor of Rossville. John was the second. Thomas fought. So these cats, all they did was say, all right, I'm mayor for four years. Now my brother gonna be married for four years, and now my brother gonna be married for four years, man. All right, clowns. But here's here's the thing, though. Here's the kicker, though. All right, if we pan right and come over here, which I'm gonna walk over here, it says that John Ross. Wait a minute. Now remember, his mama's father was an Idumian. But guess what? It says uh, John Ross was a Cherokee chief. Wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up. A Cherokee chief? See, man, these cats, these cats are straight liars. Now, hold up. In order to be a Cherokee chief, you have to be Cherokee. What does it say? It says, uh, the two-story house was the home of Cherokee chief. Now, now he's a Cherokee chief. John Ross, from boyhood until he went west over the Trail of Tears, losing his Indian wife en route, okay? Although only one eighth, hold up, wait a minute. Let me zoom in on that. Did you say one eighth? Come on, come on now. So it says, uh, although only one eighth Indian himself, Ross was the elected principal chief of the Cherokee Nation for 40 years and their advocate for justice for 57 years. Now, wait a minute, hold up. So, if he was a Cherokee chief, that would mean that he would have had to be Cherokee through his father's um, lineage, okay? Truly, not, like really and truly to be Cherokee, all right? Because it doesn't mention, it says that his maternal grandfather was McFarland, all right? White dude. And they don't say nothing about that cat being Cherokee. So, that means that his father's side would have to be Cherokee. Well, why don't mention his father then? If this guy was a principal chief and he was one a Cherokee, which is all lies and nonsense, but why don't it mention 
his father's side being Cherokee at all. Okay, because it was bullshit, man. It's a five dollar Indian, man. Okay, it's called this cat was a, a five dollar Indian, man. This cat wasn't a Native American or Israelite. Okay, that's why it doesn't talk about the uh talk about the father's side, man. Because the lie would be it, it would do away with that whole Cherokee um bullshit that it's talking about right now, man. Okay, and then we gonna but we gonna bring it over here and we gonna see what the real deal is. Because remember, this is all back um in the you know uh 17 like late 1700 1797 and when you get into the 1800s that's when you get the um dolls rolls okay when basically you could buy your way into the uh so-called native american nation in order to get funds for it okay so we got a um a sound box playing with some with some history on the house which which this is the house right here okay again it used to be sit about a like I say, I say about 100, 115 yards from here was the original site, and then they moved it to um to where it's sitting right now. But anyway, now we're gonna get down to the real to the real deal, man. About what this is really about, okay? So right here, I'm in front of a uh, front of a headstone, home of John Ross, great chief of the Cherokees. All right, born October 3rd, 1790. Died August 1866, okay? After he had bought his way into the uh, Dawes Rolls uh, Native American Registry, okay? Uh, marked by William Marsh, chapter daughters, American revolutions, yada, 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 all right? But, oh, wait a minute. But that's not the, that's not the, the precipice of this whole debauchery here's what okay see now we see what's really going on john ross freemason it says on may 29th 1963 the grand lodge of georgia free and accepted masons with mw brother Ralph A. Perry, Grand Master, presiding, dedicated the restored John Ross House, home of John Ross, Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation, 1828-1866, and illustrious Freemason. Oh, so old John was a was a Freemason. Now we know good and damn well that no true blood Native American would have been considered a Freemason in the time of the early 1800s, man. Let's get it, okay? This famed, come on, man. Let's get real. This famed house built in 1979 or 1797 is almost as old as the Republic itself. Principal speaker for his historic occasion was illustrious brother Luther A. S Luther a. Smith, sovereign grand commander blah 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 of the scottish rite of freemasonry southern jurisdiction marker placed by the by the by the educational and historic commission grand lodge blah 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 so uh this cat john ross man all right was a freemason okay who bought his way uh into the so-called native american registry okay so he could get a, a bunch of benefits, all right, and some money and, and all this other nonsense, okay? But he was really a Freemason, man. And that's why that's why he got so much um so much clout. Okay. And that's why he's uh re recorded as a historical figure, man. Because they don't they don't um they don't pump up uh and give props to to true authentic so called Native Americans, man. Okay. Now there's a lot of area and geographical areas that are um, named after noted, you know, so-called Native American uh, namesakes. All right, um, places of, of uh, you know, historical. Um, it's like I don't know what's what's the word historical significance. All right. So if there are places of historical significance. You know they'll they'll name him after a so-called Native American uh, namesake like Denali in Alaska. Okay, Denali means uh, the Great One.
okay talking about that mountain in Alaska okay you have uh, uh, the lookout mountain I'm trying to think of the, um, the Native American Native American name for it but well any, anyway Chattanooga Chattanooga itself um, the word Chattanooga I believe means the great rock okay if I'm not mistaken uh, I could be wrong okay I could be wrong but uh I may uh, I may find out the 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 true name see the Chattanooga or there's a mountain a mountain um here in Chattanooga but it's a uh it's a Native American term it means a great rock okay and then Chickamauga is a uh, so-called Native American name so you have a lot of areas around here throughout the United States northeast southeast midwest west doesn't matter okay so-called Native Americans who are the true children of Israel all right northern tribe uh, occupied all these lands okay and so all these places are of historical significance pertaining to the so-called um, Native Americans but they don't hype up individuals okay we know we know of certain historical figures um, because they're uh, they're too integral to the to the history of the so-called history of North America all right most notably um, the United States so they have to put certain Native American figures all right in the historical text because to not do so um, would allow for all, a lot of a lot of the history to completely fall apart so sometimes they just can't leave um, Native Americans so-called Native Americans out of the story all right but here we see a uh, uh, a couple of tombstones talking about this John Ross character who again it says he was one eighth uh, Cherokee all right but that's all bullshit man all right he wasn't no damn one eighth Cherokee it doesn't even talk about his father's side it talks about his maternal side and in, in, uh, on his maternal side his grandfather was old McDonald okay old McDonald had a house all right E I E I damn O and, and gave it to his grandson, man. All right. And his grandson bought his way, all right, into the Dolls Rolls Native American, so called Native American registry. All right. And then became a uh, Freemason. And they allowed it. Why? Because he was a white boy, man. Let's just say it plain like it is. All right. He was an Idumean, Idumean. Anyway, man, you know, these, these people do lie, man, all right? Steal the lands, 